So what would you be willing to sacrifice to bring Jesus to the world? Jenny Donnelly shares what God has done in her life and reveals what it really means to deny ourselves to follow the Lord. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So what does it mean to deny ourselves and take up our crosses daily? Jesus commands us to do this in Luke 9, but what does that look like? Well, with the help of today's guest, we're going to find out. But first, joining me around the table is my dear friend, De Havilland Ford. I am so happy to be <laughs> on the table today, and I'm excited, especially for today's guest. I'm she, so happy to have you. You're always a blessing. It's like being home. So I'm excited for today's guest. She is really a clarion call to the body of Christ. So well, and she's going to champion women today in a big way. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there are women watching right now that you're not really walking in all that God's designed you to do, okay. and today you're going to get a clear message message to stand up, come to order, and get in this battle, and because God wants to use you. He really does. Okay. He wants to use you to be a blessing to the world, and you're missing out. Kendra oh, Kelly Dean, you're all about let's that. Let's go. I am <laughs> all about it. I love women championing women and helping people find their purpose, yes. you know, and just like you were saying, there's more in us, and sometimes we just need that extra nudge, someone yes. to pull alongside us and say, no, mm -hmm. God's I've nudged you a few you. times. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh, many, many times. In a but good I way. needed that. Yeah, I yeah. needed the nudge and the encouragement yeah. and yeah. stepping outside your, your comfort zone and stretching. Yeah. And I'm so proud it's of pretty you. pretty cool. She Do sings, she preaches, she leads, she... She does the best parties ever. <laughs> Not ask Rachel Lamb Brown about that. Yes, I love Kendra Aww. parties for yes. sure. <laughs> and you are a, a champion of women as well. You know, I am. And your dad championed me I and you and that. Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, he's always been such a huge supporter of women and really pushed you out of your comfort zone yeah. to do what you're doing today. I still feel his hand right back here. <laughs> yeah. in my back right here. <laughs> and I'm glad he did because think yeah. about all the women that you've impacted and that you've just helped mm -hmm. change their lives because of saying yes to the Lord. And so our guest is yeah. a lady like that today. And you know, we're that. so much stronger together than we are apart. We so, are. Yes. We've got we to need come each together. Other. <laughs> we need to, because Cindy right. Murdoch has been walking with me for a long, long time, best long friends, time. and we've been through a lot together. Yeah, but it's been a great walk. And I think we, as women, have encouraged each other. We've had each other's back. Yeah, for and sure. And I think that we must have a voice that's louder than the negative voice, mm -hmm. the Yes. The voice that is bringing such a detriment to our world that let the voice... And to our children. And to our children. And to our grandchildren. Yes. We're going to talk about that. Well, she is an author and bold voice challenging the church to stand up for truth in this generation. Please welcome Jenny Donnelly. Hey. Hello. 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 Well, thank it's you so, so much for you having here. me. Thank you for being so here. So excited. So excited to have you here, and you're going to have a great word to share, and you women especially. Of course, there's some men watching too, yes. and you're going to, like, take in what we shared today, and you're going to champion your wife. I mean, their boyfriends are going to champion their girlfriend, yeah. and grandmother is going to champion their daughters and granddaughters. Yes. I believe it's going to happen. Well, just imagine... What's possible when we put the Lord's plan and purpose for our lives over our own plans? The world can change when we dare to take up our cross daily to follow Jesus. And Jenny's here to tell us more about that. There is like a, a sleeping that has been going on across the body of Christ and in women specifically just kind of snugly settled in. But God's wanting to awaken these women, and it's happening. You're a part of that. Tell us about that. Yeah, I believe that God wants to use the voices of women mm -hmm. to break the witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And I think tears are a big part of that. And so as women, God is calling us to travail, to pray. And our hearts are so connected to children mm -hmm. and family mm -hmm. that it's yeah. touching us on a very deep level. Um, tell us a little bit about your story and how you got pulled into this and could you ever imagine that God was going to do everything he's doing oh, no. right now? 
No, I'm still going, wow, God. You're still stunned. Okay, Lord, still standing on the water going, you are still king, you know, because yes. it's amazing. Um, but it's nothing that I could pull off. You know, when God calls you to do something, mm -hmm. You're like, me? Like, you look around like, did you right. pick the right person here? You know, there's, there's people with a I lot more ability. Time. I'm like, are you sure? Like, are you sure you have the right person? Are you sure? <laughs> so what had happened was um, about 12 years or so, we'd been ministering to women. That was where my heart was, was to see the voices of women unlocked. Mm -hmm. We found that their voices tend to carry shame. They you know, shame in their own voice. And it was mm -hmm. connected to deep trauma that was unresolved. And so when they have an encounter with the king, so we would do retreats and just see people get free of all sorts of stuff, um, which was cool. And then 2020, here we are, you know, in a world pandemic, and we're all wondering what in the world is going on. And you're there in Oregon, so it's like crazy. Yeah, yeah and they're, they're making efforts to, you know, push that back. But what I saw was 180, actually more than that, straight days, Antifa showed up hmm. at 5 wow. o'clock at one location. Wow. And it was like, wow. That's a lot of organization. Wow, that's mm -hmm. a lot of strategy. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the power of God. What would happen if we, as an army, yes. right. came together with the strategy? Yeah. And then I said, Lord, okay, either take me out of this state. Now, here's where the dangerous part came in. Take me out of the state or put me in the fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he took me up at the second, put me in the fight. I didn't know what that looked like. I'm just a mom. I love Jesus. I have five kids. We, you know, it's like, I, okay, I don't even know what that looks like. And so he started giving some marching orders just a little bit at a time and kind of just trickled them over the course of a couple of years. But um, the, the big question was this. When he shared with me in the middle of this, Jenny, we're going to gather a million women and we're going to go to the National Mall. Now, I did not know that de Havilland had already been in a prayer team about this. I didn't even know de Havilland, actually. Yeah. Was there someone that had a dream? Yes, Christy Johnston had a dream of a million women on the mall. Other people had, yeah, it, so it, it kind of rose up, but I didn't know that. Yeah. So when he told me, I thought, well, that's weird, because I don't know a million women. Yeah. Yeah. But the one thing I asked was this. I thought the only thing that makes sense to me is that women and groups of people would find each other and there'd be a big convergence around a central purpose. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. It was only 2020. I didn't, I didn't quite know what it was. But I said, Lord, what would cause the church to unite as an army, a large, giant convergence towards a purpose that would fight the evil on the earth? Like what, what would mm -hmm. cause that? And his answer just shook me to the core. And he said, the church will unite and fight when they take your kids. Mm -hmm. When they take your kids? When they take your kids. I wasn't expecting that mm -hmm. at all. And it hit me. It riveted me. And it, it disturbed me. I think we have that, um, that video of uh, Christy Johnson's dream. Yeah. Let's watch this. In February of this year, 2023, I had a dream. It was a warning dream. And in this warning dream, I saw the year 2025. Above the year 2025, I saw the word contagion. Now I want you to hear the prophetic solution in this dream because there was a prophetic solution that God was showing me, but he was also showing me the plans of the enemy. And in this dream, I saw children beginning to be dragged out of their homes by government officials. They looked like government officials, like out of a movie, Hunger Games. And they were dragging these children out of the homes in 2025. And as they were dragging them out, they were saying and repeating this one phrase over and over again. They were saying, this is for your safety. Parents were grabbing hold of their children, trying to pull them back. It was utter sheer terror. Now here is where the prophetic solution came in. I immediately saw the dream shift. And in that moment, I saw parents rushing out to the fronts of the borderlines of their homes. They were on their knees and they were crying out, Jesus, deliver us. They were crying out, Jesus, we plead your blood over our homes. In that moment, I saw this movement of the Holy Spirit and He went over the homes in a protection. It was this divine protection over the homes. And it was almost like this bubble of invisibility over the parents' homes that were praying. So as I saw this dream, I shared it online. And I was immediately concerned, as I'm sure you are in hearing this. But as I shared it online, someone immediately shared with me and they said to me, are you aware that the World Economic Forum has released a simulation of a coming virus for 2025 and they have called it Contagion 2025. When I saw that, I immediately knew, Holy Spirit, you have shown me and given me a glimpse into the future of the enemy's plans, but you've also given me a solution of how we are to counteract these plans, of how we are to move right now and break the plans of the enemy in their tracks. So I wanna ask you today, 
Are you going to pray and fast and stand with us? Are you going to pray and fast and stand for your children? Or are you going to sit on the sidelines and let nothing happen? We have an invitation before us to pray and fast and stand over our nations, over our children, and over the coming generations. I believe we're standing in the eye of the storm. Another storm is upon us, but God has given us a solution to break that storm before it is able to hit. And I believe that solution is parents on their knees, praying the blood, praying and asking God to deliver us over our nations, over our children in this moment. Wow, that's really a clarion call, isn't yeah. it? And so when you saw that, you kind of it, it kind of affirmed what to Haviland as well, that God mm -hmm. is calling what? For what? Yeah, prayer. So Christy actually called me and told me this dream before she released it online. And two nights prior, I'd woken up in the middle of the night, just totally awake, and I heard these words, secure the borders, sound the alarm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that meant. Hearing her dream, and then during these couple days, the Lord was speaking to me about something called the Esther Network. And he said, I want you to find as many women that love Jesus, that aren't sure exactly what to do, but they know to pray, mm -hmm. and put together a net. You know, we use the word net kind of loosely or whatever, but it really is a net. Like, I'm coming with my rope. We're tying you. We're tying you. De Havilland's a part of it. I'm going to ask all of you to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is we're gathering women around the United States and the globe, and we are inviting them to pray, and it's a systematic way. It's Monday through Saturday. comes through an audio form, but they can walk and pray their neighborhoods. They can pray over their children. What I've discovered, and I'm sure many of you know this, that... When we say pray, sometimes that's not enough. Women don't know how to pray by and large. You know, we, I get women into my home, you've been in church for 10 years, and it's like, hey, let's pray, and they're just kind of silent. So the other thing that we have that's parallel with this is something called prayer hubs. Now, prayer hubs, that was the first step when I said, okay, Lord, we got, I got to do something. I just can't hear this stuff and not do something. He said, I want you to establish prayer hubs. These are groups to to 10, he said, hey, wherever two or more gather, there I am in the midst of them and I will do whatever they agree upon. And he was kind of like, don't forget the power of two yeah. that come together. So we wrote 30 prayers, even word for word, because I didn't want you know, my neighbor coming over and being like, I'm too intimidated to pray out loud. No, this is about active, activating the voices of women. The voice means light, mm -hmm. sending light into, into darkness. And so we just put 30 prayers and then what we did is the Lord kind of harassed me in my sleep one night. And all I could see were color sheets. And I saw scriptures for kids. So we started uploading five color sheets to the Prayer Hub Network and per month. And the kids start coloring. We get them in the living room and get them trained in prayer. So that's, you know, that's our offensive attack is What are prayer. they coloring? Like what are the pictures? Um, pretty much anything that's through the 30 prayer prayers. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's the blood of Jesus. It's um, praying over America. It's praying over the schools. Oh, it's wow. declarations of I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So, you know, it's these endless possibilities of, yeah. of color sheets. And so I bet you have some stories from that. Oh, I do. Well, let me let me share one. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, can I share yeah, one? I you Thank did. you for asking. <laughs> My favorite story of the prayer hub is a single mother said, okay, she came to one of our conferences, and we're talking about this, everybody get a prayer hub, you know, and make sure that you include your children. And so she got with her sister, and they had a prayer hub of two, that's where she started, and her daughter, 13 years old, she dra drug her daughter, like, you're coming to this. Her daughter didn't want to go to her, you know, her daughter was in kind of the, like, I'm just gonna challenge everything here. Yeah. And her daughter had texted her and said, mom, I like girls. Mm. And she told her, I like girls. Mm. And her mom said to her, single mom, she said, no, that's not the destiny God has for you. Took her to prayer hubs. So six prayer hubs later, six months later, because we just ask people once a month, one hour, yeah. everybody can do this. By month six, she texts her mom and she says, mom, I want to thank you for simply saying no to me. Since I've been sitting there in your prayer hubs, all of a sudden I'm thinking, I think God really does love me. I think he does have a destiny for me. Wow. Wow. And I don't like girls. And I'm sorry I called your prayer hub dumb. That's like my favorite part of the whole thing. I love that. And so this girl, just by mom saying, no, you're coming, just like, we, you know, you're going to school, yeah. we're, gonna, we're going yeah. to church, we're going right. to prayer. And see, it has to become part of what we do. You just kind of open up the Holy Spirit yeah. 
to do what he mm -hmm. does best, mm -hmm. and that is to enter a room yeah. where the Word of God is, where prayer yeah. is, yes. and that presence arrests yeah. kids in a way that nothing else yeah. can. Yeah, and I, I love that because I know there are average housewives watching this, right? Just the everyday yeah. mom. You're sharing a story of when it the, it came into their home. And yeah. so I just really, what, what can just, even as I know women are hearing this and they're saying, well, I don't know how to start a conversation. What can we do to just encourage women that this is, even just bringing that up with the homosexual agenda with kids. Kids don't feel comfortable. How do we empower women to speak to their children into this without running the child away? Yeah, that's so good. I think asking children, tell me, especially if they're in the public school system, tell me what's going on. What kind of, tell me about these pronouns. Mm. You know, talk to me about that. Mm -hmm. What is that, does that, is that, or do you see that helping people, like asking questions, being curious, and then bringing them back to the word of God you know, the thing that we can't do is have this response of shock and, oh, that's right. terrible, and jump all over it, you know. Right. So having conversations like that, but getting them in the prayer hub, believe it or not, mm -hmm. yeah. starts doing some of the work because the Word of God is coming out of their mouth. Yes. And so it's this powerful way to do it without, you know, so coming good. at them. Well, you know, um, it is a growing problem that is shocking parents. Yeah. And it's, of course, dividing families when children are encouraged to lie to their parents while activists play on normal insecurities to push their young minds into gender confusion. I want you to listen to what this one family faced and how a mother handled it. This is really going to bless you. Two years ago, I was a sleepwalking, naive mom. I had no idea the evil that was coming for our kids until one day my little 12-year-old daughter was invited to stay after school for an art club. But when she got there, it was actually Gender and Sexuality Awareness Club. And an outside activist had been invited in to teach my daughter about transgenderism, telling her that if she's not fully comfortable in her biological sex, it's because she's trans. She taught her that queer is a term to use while she's still figuring out her sexuality. She taught her about puberty blockers, suicide, polyamory, and she told her that parents might not be safe and it's okay to lie to them about where you are. Thank God my daughter came home and told us everything that happened to her that day, but the damage was already done. She had been convinced that her normal discomfort as a 12-year-old girl means she's transgender. And thank God that we came together as a family to get her through this confusion, and she has now completely desisted the trans identity. I'm Erin for Parental Rights, and I'm inviting you and your family to pray, fast, and stand with us at your state capitol on April 13th, 2024. Don't mess with our kids. Okay, so this is uh, one of the things that you all are, are doing as kind of, a, you know, uh, an, well, an offense, a defense, I mean, to really counter what's going on. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people watching around, you don't even realize that I watch Kendra's face over here. She <laughs> got madder and madder as she was oh, listening yeah. because um, yeah. this is what's going on in a lot of public schools. And some people say, well, we're going to homeschool or private school. But guess what, Haviland? Not everyone, not everyone can, afford can, no, can exactly. homeschool school. or private school. So we've exactly. got to change it in the public schools, don't mm -hmm. we? We do. And so with a million women going to Washington, initially I was like, why? God, you know, I didn't understand all this, the, how it could transform things. But now what I'm seeing is, wait a minute. If we start some education, yes. because low information equals low engagement with spheres of culture. I didn't know much about government. I didn't know much about my rights in school boards, but this is what I'm seeing, that we need to start a process. Even through the prayer hubs, we're beginning to educate about, okay, let's get to the ballot box. Yes. Because God doesn't vote, we do. Right. right. Okay. And also, let's get to the school board. Yes. A lot of people say, I didn't know I could go to a school board. I mean, I don't have kids in the school. You can go. And we can start flipping these school boards. And I don't want anybody to get overwhelmed over this. I want people to lean in mm -hmm. to discovering a new... Yes territory that God is saying, hey, Christians have stayed out, created a vacuum, and where there's a vacuum, darkness comes in, mm -hmm. and it doesn't give up. In Portland, I just That's thought, true. I wonder if they're ever going to get tired. Nope. As long as they were funded, they were going to stay. Their light had to come in right. and push that out. But what's coming up in April? Yeah. So April, we are calling all 50 states mm -hmm. to go to their state capital, April 13th. Now that's by design, it's 413, which we're landing on Esther 413. When Mordecai said to Esther, Esther said, hey, I can't go, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. This is way too dangerous for me. And he essentially said, Esther, you're already dead. 
-hmm. That's my translation. But if you read it, that's basically what he says. Yeah. And she had to wake up like, oh, the palace isn't gonna save me, so I can't tuck my kids in private school and we're all okay? Yeah. yeah. No, right. she had to pray fast and stand Good. and yeah. use her voice. Yeah. She couldn't sit and just pray that maybe the servant would tell the king. Maybe the king will have a dream. See, yeah. this is where God is calling women to go into the public yes. square to go out and about. So. Capitals are a place where we're gonna stand and we're gonna have a three day fast leading up to that. And so that's the prayer, fasting and standing. There's other things, of course, through the Esther Network. Joni, can I speak into this really sure. quick? You know, when you think of the public schools, a lot of them are in minority communities and they target minority communities. I feel like this call too is for the minority woman. Thank you. Or the single woman, not just minority, but the single woman who can't afford to put their kids they're not okay with the hormone blockers. They're not okay, and they don't feel like they have a voice because the government mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. made them mm -hmm. to believe that. Yeah. And so we're not just calling, we're calling all women yeah, to stand right. with their capital, to say, you know what, I'm not okay. I can't, maybe can't afford it, but I have a voice. Yes. And so I just felt the Lord say, it's not, because we don't want to just call one group of women to the mall. That's we right. want to see oh, a, right. a multicultural yes. army. Rainbow. A rainbow yes. coming and, and to break this power of silence through even the poverty that says, well, you That's can't right. afford so you don't have a voice. And that is a lie. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to say, we're in a Judges yes. 4 moment That's where right. mothers in Israel arise because most women are not okay with this. Exactly. Even in the urban community, they're saying, we want mm -hmm. our voice to be heard. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. We have to look at the voices of mothers yeah. and say, it's time to roll. Yes. No matter your economic status, no matter your color, it is time to roll. I think it's the devil's worst nightmare yes. that we come together and do this. Absolutely. Yeah. Your book, Wake Up Dead, I think this is an important message for all of us living in this time and season, and that is that uh, my old self has to be crucified mm -hmm. with Christ. And yeah. a lot of people don't understand that terminology, but we have to die that he can live in us, don't we? Yes. And that's not an easy process. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I think <laughs> as a Christian, I was like, yes, Jesus died. Like we want Jesus to do all the dying. And we want all the victory. <laughs> and then we whatever the you got on the other side of that, that's gonna be mine, you know? <laughs> so, but the Bible, when I started researching this, because the Lord was telling me, Jenny, what I need you to do is wake up in the morning as a dead person so I can work fully through you. And so then he would confront things like, yeah, you're just gonna need to die to that. When someone's lying about me at our church or what, you know, they are saying about this online about you. And it's like, oh, you wanna just get like, wait a minute. And he's yeah. like, let it go. You know, yeah. so dying to let self, it go. let it go. Let betrayal, it go. all oh, of it, right? Betrayal. But yes. what you get on the other side of it, what, this is what he said, if you want, cause I prayed this crazy prayer. You know, you, you pray stuff and then you're like, why did I pray that? Um, I said, God, I want you to make me into new wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I did not consider how wine was made. Mm, a lot okay, of going on. great. Crush you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I told him I wanted to be potent. And he said, "Well, that means you have to go from a grape that's sweet and kind, mm -hmm. that kind of Christian, to potent." Mm -hmm. So I went through the biggest betrayal of my life after that prayer. I mean, it was almost like he rolled up his sleeves and went, "Okay, well, let's roll." Mm -hmm. Want to fight, and, baby? <laughs> yeah. And so I got massive betrayal. I had infirmity in my body. I had witchcraft I dealt with. I mean, I'm telling you, I called in my girl troops and everybody that would pray and just said, "I'm help." You know, it brought me to my knees. Kind of all the, you know, the storm, it kind of settled down. And then I was like, God, I feel like roadkill. Like, are you, like, I just felt like everyone thing went silent, but I was flat. I was like a pancake. <laughs> and I said, God, are you gonna come soon? He goes, yeah, don't worry, you're just fermenting. <laughs> and I was like, okay, wow. I'm in, and I didn't, you know. So then eventually, I got this, I got something that I didn't even know was in me. It was like the butterfly wings mm -hmm. that the caterpillar didn't know because they were tucked in. Yeah. But the cocoon yeah. provides the resistance and yes. then you have to try to get out and that's the dying. And then all of a sudden something came out of it that I was like, I didn't even know this was inside of me. I didn't know this kind of authority. Wait, I can fly. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, but I think we, you know, right now going to Washington DC, I'm like, I told my husband that I, I think I have wake up dead to part two. <laughs> because there's other things that God wants us to just lay down, sure. right? Yes. So anyway, it's a beautiful process process it is not easy but it is it is where we're destined to be so good resurrected with him I wonder if there's someone watching right now and you hear us talking about the Lord and prayer and the Bible and standing up for your kids and speaking truth and that you don't really have a relationship 
with the Lord, but you you would like to. I wonder, Jenny, if you would just uh, lead us in a simple salvation prayer oh, for those that are watching. You can just to. look right this way. Right here? And, yeah, uh, perfect. And lead us, and we'll perfect. repeat after you. Yeah, just repeat after me. Father God. Father, Father God. God. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank, Thank you for, for loving, loving me so, so much. much. And sending your one and only son. And sending your one and only son. To die for me. To die, to die for me. me. Brutally die for me. Brutally die for me. And pay for all of my sins. And pay for all of my sins. And get me straight in relationship with God himself. Get me straight into relationship with God Himself. There is no barrier between me and the Father. There is no barrier between me and the Father. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for empowering me. I thank you for empowering me. Help me learn to love you. Help me learn to love you. Thank you for raising me into eternal life. Thank you for raising me into eternal life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, I'd love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? Because this is a new journey that you are beginning. And, um, you know, the Bible says this life is just a stepping stone to the life to come. And that prayer prepares you for eternity, which is forever. And uh, I tell you, all of us here at the table, we want to meet you in eternity. And we want you to have eternal life. And we do that through Jesus and the sacrifice that he made on the cross for our sins. Wow, it's really powerful, a free gift that he gives. Uh, she also prayed that God would empower you, and that's for now, yes. for on this earth, with the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, fill me with your spirit that I may do all that you've called me to do. I tell you what, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about so many of you that are awakening to what God has anointed you to do, just like he did for Jenny. She will tell you, she would be the last person to think she would be here doing this at this time in this season in the world today. And so I know most of us feel that way sitting at the table. So you're not alone and just understand that God has tremendous purpose for you. Well, we're out of time, but I want to leave you with this thought. What are you holding on to that's standing in the way of you being used by God? Is it unforgiveness? I mean, is it some kind of trauma that you went to, hurt or pain? I want to tell you, you can give all of that to Jesus. He can heal your heart and you can be brand new. I promise if you surrender all of that to him, the Lord will unleash your potential to impact the world. So that's you today. Again, that's why that toll-free number's on the screen. We also have uh, prayer partners that would love to pray with you and encourage you if you prayed that prayer of salvation. And... Uh, it's our honor, it's our privilege to pray with you today. So write down the number. If you, if you get a busy signal or if you get a voicemail or I promise we'll call you back, but just write it down and call it back later because I know a lot of people will call it one time, but we want to pray for you. I want to thank Jenny for joining us. Be sure to pick up a copy of her book, Wake Up Dead. It's available now. And for more on how you can get involved in what the Lord is doing through Jenny, you can visit her online at Her Voice movement that's mvmt.com hervoicemovement.com and if today's table talk has touched your life let us know leave us a comment on facebook instagram twitter or youtube we always love hearing from you thank you so much for watching i really am excited about your future and what god has for you in the days ahead remember those dates in april we'll let you know when the million women what's it called again one million women one million women <laughs> in Washington, D.C. as we stand up for truth, as we stand up for our children and our family. And uh, I want you to be a part of that. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.